Welcome to lecture 17 where we're going to talk about how to find items in your images. Our reference is chapter 11, uh, sections 4 and 5. All right, so this is our image. We've got a bunch of blocks in our scene and we'd like to figure out where these objects are by segmenting out the things that are in the foreground from the background. And the technique we're using for that is called thresholding. And so the idea is we've got this image here on the top left that shows um, our blocks. And then if we can pick a certain threshold value, say 161, that will allow us to see the blocks and then have the background all be turned to white. So anything darker than 161 is turned to black, everything else is turned to white. That lets us find those images. And the question is, how do we find a good value of Z? So here we have that histogram of the image. So each of these blocks show exactly how many pixels correspond to that gray level. And this red line here is our threshold value that's in between along this gray scale. And you notice that it sort of you know, fits in a, a natural divide between these two, which means that all of the background pixels, the light colored carpet, are all clustered together and then we get a reasonable cluster for all of the object pixels. This becomes a lot more clear if we plot the variance, um, specifically the within group variance of the image. So for our pixel values that are part of our object, if we calculate their variance between them, you can see that you know, there is this natural trough right in between them. So what we'd like to do is minimize the within group variance the image. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, the neat thing about this minimizing the within group is the same thing as maximizing the between group variance of the image. And so there's a duality here. It turns out that one of those is easier to compute than the other. So here's our review from our last lecture we said that if you give us a pixel, the probability that that pixel belongs to group zero, which is the background, given the threshold ZT, means you know, what is the probability that a pixel belongs to the background? Well, then that's just summing up all the pixels that are lighter or equal to ZT and dividing that by the total number of pixels. This gives us our quantity Q0, which is the probability that any pixel at random belongs to the background. And the inverse of that is Q1, which is the probability that it belongs um, to the foreground. And so Q0 plus Q1 are going to equal 1. They sum together. And our mean value that we have, you know, the average value for the background we just multiply our z value, every possible z value, times the probability of that z value, and then we divide that by q0. And that gives us you know, what is our mean value in the foreground and background and the mean value in the foreground. And then we can substitute for z the quantity z minus the mean value, and that gives if we square that value, it gives us our variance. And we can compute our variance for both of those. And so our within group variance is sigma squared w, within group variance, is just we multiply what is the probability that it belongs to the background times the variance of the background plus what is probably it belongs to the foreground times the variance of the foreground. We sum those together. That gives us our within group variance. And you'd say, okay, we're done. All we have to do is compute that. But the problem with this one that makes it slightly annoying is that we have to compute Q0 as a function of ZT for every value of ZT and Q1, uh, sigma 1 squared for every value of ZT. And that's annoying. It would be nice if we had some format where we didn't have to recompute those each time. And that's what today's lecture is about. So the total variance is defined as the probability value times our gray level value minus our mean value squared. Um, and we want to um, rewrite this variance as the sum of both our within and our uh, between group variance. 
the first thing we do is we can expand this into two terms, where the first term is everything that has to do with, um, you know, if it's uh, a background, and the second term is everything in the foreground. So the background is summed from 0 to zt, uh, whereas the foreground is zt plus 1 to our largest gray level value, which is n minus 1. And then what we can do is we can add and subtract to each of these the terms, uh, ui terms. So we can add and subtract u0 plus, you know, minus u, mu0 plus mu0. In the second term, we can subtract off mu1 and add mu1. You know, this does nothing to change. We've added and subtracted the same thing in each one. And then we can take these squares and we can multiply them out. And so we can expand this out. And so we have the first term. You know, this is the, 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 variance, the variance squared here, and then the, the difference of the, the mean times the, the mean of the foreground. And these green terms are called the cross terms. And the nice thing is that it turns out that these cross terms are going to equal zero. And so we can prove that just by expanding just these cross terms. So that's what I'm going to do in this next slide. I've got sigma squared, and I'm going to just uh, expand these cross terms. And so I'm taking my first mu, I'll just say mu i. That way I can cover both of these, and I'm going to drop off the summations. Uh, instead of saying it's from 0 to z2, I'll just say that it's a summation over our z values. And then we multiply this through. So we've got z times mu i, and then we've got minus mu i times mu i. And, um, well, we got z times mu, and then mu i squared, and mu i times mu. Uh, I can take these terms, and I can pull out the constant values. So mu is constant over there. All I'm doing here is I'm summing over z values. Here I can pull out the mu i squared. Here I can pull out the mu i mu. And then I can take these terms and our summation of z p z, well that is just the term q i multiplied by our mean value. Again here this is going to be the mean value times q i and our orange term. Uh, it's just a summation over p z, that's, so that's just a q i term. Similarly for a green term, this is summation over pz, so that's just a qi term. So we've got these terms here, and then I can rearrange so that I have the similar ones together. So I'll have mu i mu i qi minus mu i squared qi. Well, these are you know mu i squared minus mu i squared is zero, and mu mu i minus mu i mu is always going to be zero. Therefore, my original term only does not have the cross products. It only has my z minus mu 0 squared and mu 0 minus mu. And the same thing over here for mu 1s. Now, these terms are all ones that we know in that initial slide I show you. They all have definitions. In particular, this z minus mu 0, that's going to be our sigma value. Um, and so we can write this out that our sigma squared, our variance, is just going to be our, our probability that belongs to the background times the sigma, the variance of the background, and plus the probability of the background times the difference of our average background minus our, our total average, and the same thing for our foreground image. And so I can cluster together everything that has just the variances and everything that has the mu's, and I get two terms which I can bracket together. And so this first one is the within group variance, and this other two is the between group variance. What is our variance um, compared to the, the total mean values? So our two terms, the mean and the uh, between variance. So you can say in text that this total variance is the sum of the within group variance and the between group variance. Now, earlier we showed you that we could come up with an expression for this within group variance, but it required us to calculate the uh, variance for every value of the threshold. And so to avoid that, we're going to compute this between group variance. And I'm just going to show you the math. 
Uh, it's beautiful and it's fun to work through. Uh, and you can do that uh, with a pencil and paper. Um, and so this is from the previous slide. And the simplifications that we can do is that, well, Q1, by the law of total probability, uh, the probability that you're the background plus the probability that you get either foreground is equal to 1. And then we have a definition for the mean is just the weighted average of the foreground and the background and the foreground means. And so we can now substitute these values in. And the first thing that I'll do here is I'll substitute from a Q1. I want to have everything in terms of Q0. So I'm just going to replace that with 1 minus Q0. Next thing that I'll do is I'm going to replace my, my mu values with my weighted average of my two means. Uh, so I've plugged that in in two different places here. Now I have to uh, rearrange our terms. Um, well, before I do that, I'm going to replace all my Q1s. So I have no Q1s in there. It's all terms of Q0s. And now I have an expression that's only a function of Q0, mu0, and mu1. And so now I can rearrange my terms. I can collect together all of my um, mu zeros. Uh, so I'm just uh, factoring through, multiplying through my, my mu1 here. And then I can you know, do some simplification. My mu1 minus mu1, those will cancel out. My next step is to uh, factor out my q0 on this side. So this will be just a q0 squared times a mu1 minus mu0, my difference between my two means. I can do a, a similar trick over here on the other side where I collect together my mu zeros, my, my mean values, and then I can collect that so multiplied by my, my q0 value. Um, that allows a nice simplification because this is mu0 minus mu1. I'm going to factor that out. 1 minus q0 times mu0 minus mu1. Um, and now um, my square value I can distribute between my two terms. And now I can see, hey, I've got this mu0 minus mu1 over here. And I have it as well over here. Remember the difference between a minus b squared is the same as b minus a squared. So I can reverse those. So now I have the same term in two different places. And so now I can collect all my like terms. I've got, um, this is 1 minus q0. I can factor that out times my q0 times my mu0 minus mu1 squared. Uh, and I've got this term here. And you'll notice, oh, I'm going to be able to cancel out my q0 uh, minus q0. And so my total term of my between group variance, which is what I wanted to find, is going to be uh, 1 minus the probability that I'm the background times the probability that I'm the background times the difference of my two mean values. Now these two mean values and my q0 are all functions of the threshold value, but I only have to calculate those three values. and. Um, I have uh, an identity for my mu0. Uh, so uh, the book shows you some a way that you can compute this all in just uh, a single pass. It's a very efficient algorithm. It's fi rather fun to read through. But that uh, concludes.